Tell us a little bit about this tasting room because it's very eclectic. And when I walked in, I couldn't help but wonder if it comes from the English roots or if it's mm -hmm. out of your head or your dreams or just... That's all her. Okay. You can blame me. It. You can blame me from coming here, but it's all her. You can now blame me for how exactly how I, I love it. it. Like um, it's out of my head. Okay. So the tasting room is really like an extension of our home. Okay. Um, I wanted it to architecturally feel like a house. I wanted it interior design wise to feel like a house. Um, I've seen a lot of really lovely converted barn type tasting rooms right. around. And I said, I don't want to do that. I've got these beautiful old farm buildings already. Yes. So I don't want to put another barn up. So I thought, what if we designed something that felt like a house with soft furnishings, eclectic yes. furnishings, a mix of modern, a mix of antique. How did you guys get here to this place uh, and this amazing Yeah, facility? that's my fault. <laughs> Um, yeah, it all started with a wedding. So um, we not came. No, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that, not our. Came here for a friend's wedding, and um, and really, I I just was blown away how pretty it is, how beautiful it was here. And we were here for a few days, and I started seeing what the vineyards and the farms were doing around here, and how people had planted up vineyards, and then they'd built venues on the farms. You know, the tasting rooms and. Right. So that's how they were selling their wine, and it just kind of really spoke to me as a as a as a fun idea and a business to do, and 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 so that's how it all started, really. That's cool. Yeah. Did you have any background in any of this? The only background I had, I had a background. I ran and owned venues in back in London. Okay. So um, from the hospi hospitality side, I had that background. So from the the wine tasting. Um, facility and the winery, that side of things, I had the background, but then from the grape growing, the wine making, um, you know, <laughs> really very limited. So Kevin, tell us a little bit about these two Petit Verdots and how they differ from year to year. Certainly. So uh, beginning with the 2017 Petit Verdot, uh, this Petit Verdot is coming from a year that has uh, a lot, significantly a lot less rainfall. Uh, then comparison uh, in comparison to the 2018. In 2017, we got just under uh, 40 inches of rain, whereas in 2018, we got about 90 inches. So we're looking at a significant increase in water. Um, and as we get into harvest, those grapes are just going to soak up all that water, and you're looking at uh, a significantly lower concentration of sugars and tannins and everything that packs the flavor into the wine. Um, so looking at the 2017, a little bit more age on it as well. So we're getting into the tertiary flavors and deliberate oxidation. You're getting a little bit more mocha and coffee from that 17, as well as a little bit more bitter black currant. Okay. Um, whereas the 2018, uh, we're sticking primarily in the fruit, uh, the fruit realm. We're getting the, the black plum, black cherry. Um, it's still a little bit of black currant, but it's not quite that bitter, sour, underripe black currant yeah. uh, that you'll see in a, a better aged red. I love it. Well, let's give them a try. Certainly. Uh, I definitely recommend beginning with the 2017. Okay. And we'll pour a couple here for you all. All right. So the 2017 is going to have a significantly larger portion of Petit Verdot in the blend. Uh, it is cut just with a touch of Merlot. So sitting about 95% mm -hmm. Petit Verdot, 5% Merlot. Mm -hmm. uh, that Merlot is just going to lift the body up a little bit, mm -hmm. give it a little bit more uh, ability in oak to, to pull some flavors and concentrations from. Mm-hmm. Really nice, and I get that tertiary. Mm -hmm. uh, with the bottle age, the additional year uh, sitting on the bottle, we're getting into a little bit more uh, almost gamey, herbaceous right. uh, forest floor, mushrooms, yeah. um, a couple more years, and, and it'll develop into a very beautiful Petit Verdot. It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Mm. Yeah, I, I'm not getting those primary fruit so much as I'm getting that tertiary and that secondary beautiful. Certainly, and in, in comparison, the 2018 here, that first note you're going to get is this big, bright black plum, black cherry. So these primary fruits uh, on these wines um, are going to be much more at the forefront than in the 2017. Ooh, and you can even smell it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. 